Welcome to Studio 45 Drives, and uh, we're here on a wonderful sunny Friday morning. I'm here with uh, Brett Kelly, and who's the head of our research and development mm -hmm. group over in uh, 45 Drives Product Development. Yep. And uh, we are here to talk about storage solutions, uh, high-density storage solutions uh, powered by SAF. You got it, my favorite. Right. You love stuff, yeah. uh, and of course, 45 drives hardware. You know the assumption we're talking about 45 hard drives hardware here. So high density servers with uh, 15, uh, 30, 45, or 60 hard drives, as well as our new hybrid and all solid state options. Yep, right. You got it. So when clustering, uh, we're talking about a clustered solution with Ceph, which is sort of the ultimate in flexibility and the and, Swiss and, Army and, chainsaw, and, as I've heard it described. Swiss Army as chainsaw one time. of storage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Open source, no license fees. You got it. Yeah, and uh, and works great with our, our open hardware, so you're not locked mm -hmm. into you know anything in particular. Uh, yet we will, as we'll get into it, we can provide full support in behind stuff. Can be a little bit intimidating to the people who are using. Yeah, a bit of time. a learning curve, but we help uh, trim that. And, out. and we are there to provide any level of service from do it all to just be in the background while yeah, you, you do it, you do it yourself. One hundred percent. Yeah. You know, some people are intimidated by stuff, Brett. Like, I mean, you use the stuff constantly. Mm -hmm. You're immersed in it, um, and uh, so. But somebody out there who's considering a, you know, moving to a, a clustered source solution mm -hmm. right off the bat, there's an intimidation factor to it. So I like to get to things like that by saying physically what is it, and start there, and we'll talk about how software layers on Beautiful. top of it to make it all work. Cool. So what we've drawn here um, is. A, uh, a sort of minimal, uh, we're going to use case in a few minutes when we get into yeah, this yeah. video, use case, and we're going to talk about one of the criteria we put in there is, uh, uh, two of the criteria we put in there. Number one is no single point of failure, okay? but the size we're talking about, 500 terabytes, which we'll bring in later, uh, is, is quite modest in, in terms of high density storage machines. So we're kind of at a minimum configuration for this. So you got it. Yep. So I got these things here. I got a row of boxes. It says storage nodes. What are storage nodes? They are the 45 drive storinators. Whether, like you said, 15, 30, 60, um, I forgot, 45. 45. Well, there you go. How to, oh, I said 45 store. No, okay. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so it's our storinator chassis. Uh, as well as our hybrid models are the soon Beautiful. to develop. So this is your storage machines. These are it the rack mount classical. computers uh, with a motherboard in it. It's a large storage server. For you, storage server. Storage server. You got it. Yep. Okay. Why are we limited to file systems? We're limited to file systems because the vast majority of people who come to us for clustering, they're storing files. Uh, Ceph is great if you want your storage cluster to uh, store and serve objects, it's your choice. And blocks too, it, uh, it does a great, they're, they're, they're great at block level, but the vast majority of use cases that we get happen to be files. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna limit this conversation to a Ceph FS. Yep which is wonderful and well evolved right now, right? You got it, yeah. So we have this row of boxes, there's two boxes, black boxes showing there, and it says file gateways. What's a file gateway? So uh, the file gateways in this scenario is they are two uh, servers, we'll get to why there's two, that mount the CephFS chair, and then share it out with whether it's SMB or NFS. So it's they act as kind of that curtain between your clients who speak to regular file systems and traditional storage technologies that we're all used to yeah. and kind of separates it from the cluster. So that can be very beneficial for things like Active Directory and stuff like that. You don't have to join your whole cluster into the AD. You only have to put your file gateways in and stuff like that. So I'm getting this, I got these clients. It's just a little one word out here with the you know, fan network fan out in my diagram. But that's your whole confidence. would be hundreds of clients. Yep. They got to speak to something. They speak to these file gateways. You got it. Via your network. Uh, and these file gateways really are a curtain. And, 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 and these are one virtualized IP, correct? That is correct, yeah. And it's, there are two for, to avoid a single point of failure. Yep. You really only need one to get it done, but you don't want a single point of failure on your front end for your beautifully safe cluster. And you're not limited to two either. Like you, you can have up, you can have an end number of of these all acting as failovers. Okay, so CTTB, which is a well-proven technology, links these file gateways. Your clients talk to them like it's talking to just a standard NAS box in your network. One hundred percent. Yeah, and that's you got it. So, so from the end of speaking to your clients, it's dead simple. 
yeah. when you got this done. There's nothing magic. I don't have to go to my clients do magic. I just point to uh, but I just point my thing to the file, my Samba server or my NFS server, right? Yep. Yep. That, 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 that's all there is to it. Okay, and uh, yeah, let, let's just dig a little deeper in the idea of, of this being a minimal configuration. Again, as you pointed out, I really only need one file gateway. Yep. Right, but if I have one, I got a single point of failure. Mm -hmm. So we're drawn two. You can put as many as you want. Okay, that's cool. And we're showing three uh, storage yeah, nodes yep. because you know uh, Brett Kelly's rule. It's not your rule. It's not the rule of it. As you keep saying, uh, split brain. You can get into brain. ambiguity if you have two of them. Yep. So Seth specifies that you need three as a minimum. Yep, you got it. So if I really want to do a minimal. Let, 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 let's just go a little aside here. I think I know where you're going okay. here. And, uh, and say, I'm a startup. Yeah. I'm going to be really storage intensive, and I don't want to start on a, a non-clustered uh, uh, solution because I want the incredible scalability of a cluster. Yeah. I think it's so cool, and I'm going to step back. We haven't drawn it. We're not going to draw it. But say, we could, we could start off with one file gateway, and we could start off with one storage node, couldn't we? We could. How do we do that? How do we do one storage? So the one thing that's obvious, we do that just by giving up our single point of failure. But yep. from a startup, I can deal with a, a failure every now and then, right? Yep. Because we're going to stay up all night and then because we're a startup. Yeah, you get scarier things happen sometimes. Yeah, scarier things happen anyway. So how do we get away with one storage node? We said we need three. Virtualization. Ah. All right, my fun, fun, fun. Uh, yeah, no, but we virtualize. So it's, uh, it's a cool... Um, the idea is you take one box, and start with a mere minimum of 45, so you've got three HBA cards in it. And uh, we create these three boxes in one box, but virtualized. And we pass through um, the HBA card that's got all the drives attached to it, so it actually has full control over the physical hard drives underneath. So al although the operating system is virtualized, the actual storage isn't. So that's, that's, it's a cool little balance point of, of uh, putting all in one box, but still kind of, it's like a, it's a hybrid virtual physical. <laughs> like I'm, I'm going crazy now. Yeah, yeah, but but it it is really elegant, isn't it? Yeah. That I could start off with a Ceph cluster, and I'd still have redundancy because my Ceph does what RAID does. So I still yeah. have redundancy at storage device. My data is not all in one. You know, the data eggs aren't all in one basket. Yeah, one hundred percent. Right, yeah. the, and and doing the equivalent of RAID's doing. But with RAID, I'm very structured. I'm very locked into what I choose. Yeah. And if we do it this way, I can start off with one file gateway, one storage machine, and I got a cluster, and then when I add it, I just add it by putting more machines on it. You right? got it, and then when you add more machines, you add them as physical machines. And when you add enough physical machines that that first one isn't your single point of failure anymore, you can convert it to a physical machine. Right. So you can start virtual and Beautiful. end up physical. Yeah. Beautiful, uh, and one more point in file gateways. File gateway is just simply a computer. Oh yeah, well, and it's yeah. not a super high powered computer no. either, is it? What, like, what what sort of specs would you do for? Uh, uh, like, of course, like server grade, right? So server motherboard, ECC RAM, uh, uh, any like E five, like twenty six twenty is a solid CPU so, for that. So like mid, eight core. Mid, yeah, mid, mid, middle really middle of the road. Middle of the road. Yeah, right? You yeah. don't have to break the bank for it. Yeah, and then yeah. you can put enough RAM in there to yeah. cache everything if you want, but like. 32 to 64 gigabytes of memory, nothing too crazy. And 45 drives, we have 1U and 2U options for that. Yes, we do. And uh, the 1U people would use to conserve rack space. Yep. The 2U, uh, the 2U gives you some height to put ten, multiple 10 gigabit ports, put 10 gigabit you got cards it. in. Yep. Yeah, can't really do that in a 1U. One, one no, 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 not as easily, no. no not as easily. Yeah. yeah, we have 10 gigabit options in 1U, but, yeah, but not, the, mu not multiples. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. The next thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about the three major parameters that you set when okay. you're setting up Ceph. So Ceph is, um, you know, a lot of people struggle with Ceph at the start, mm -hmm. and it looks intimidating, but it's not intimidating, is it? It, no. it shouldn't be. It's just this, and we're going to go through this major uh, th th this section. There's three parameters you set in Ceph, and understanding the interplay of these things, it's magic what you can do with these three parameters and the flexibility to on the fly changes to what you want to do. So let's go over those three parameters. We'll talk about what they mean and then we'll talk about the interact. And once we've talked about that, then we want to put together, we'll talk about a real use case. We'll talk about plugging some numbers into this and making this a, a real system that somebody used to solve a problem. You got it.